Hello and welcome back to the Smarter Tech Podcast. I'm Nick, the EMF guy Pino. I'm the author of the Non-Tinfoil Guide to EMFs and an advocate for safe technologies. Today I'm here with uh, Tara Williams, the founder of Conscious Spaces. How are you doing? Well, thanks. Thanks for having me, Nick. Yes, nice well, thanks you. for being on the show. Um, you know, I, I met your, um, I think he's your husband, Darren? My, is my that, better is that correct? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there you go. So uh, he, he told me about Conscious Spaces when I mm -hmm. met him uh, in the UK in London at the Health Optimization Summit uh, 2023, back in June of 2023. So I guess it's a, a year ago as we're releasing this episode in, in June of 24. Mm -hmm. And he told me about Conscious Spaces. And I was, I was curious because you guys have uh, a lot of different things that really aligned with my brand, with my findings mm -hmm. on the last seven mm -hmm. years as an, an author on EMFs. And I said, mm -hmm. well, they, they seem to have gotten, you know, the science right. And, and I really want to explore what they're doing. And then Darren told mm -hmm. me also, you had a personal journey and still have yes. with electro hypersensitivity. Maybe we can mm -hmm. jump into that. How did you first um, discover that you know, electronic devices or other sources of EMFs could uh, impact your health? Okay, great question. Um, initially, I was, from the age of 19, found myself, unfortunately, bedridden for the decade after that. 90% of the time was in bed. And um, on, on a journey of trying to find answers, because I wasn't at that point getting any answers from the mainstream, I started looking at... Um, absolutely everything mentally physically emotionally spiritually i could mm -hmm. i was researching and then when i could i started studying um what i could because i was diagnosed with me post viral chronic fatigue syndrome endometriosis and the list went on and on um i started doing nutritional therapy um, various other healing modalities it took me down the spiritual route as well as the psychological route um trying to find answers to what was going on with me um, and in recent times, I trained with a uh, environmental medicine clinic in Austria. Um, so what I found was as I was starting to piece the puzzles together, one of the things that nobody was talking about was the environment. So what, what, what was I surrounding myself with, you know? And so it made me look at air, water. Those are the kind of the ones that you go to first. Um, but as time went on, I found that I was experiencing sensitivity to, and this is obviously 25 plus years ago. So I was experiencing sensitivity to Wi-Fi routers and mobile phones back then. Um, and I thought it was just me, you know, I was extra sensitive. So it's just me, it just, I kind of put it down to that. But then I thought I'd do some research and obviously Google isn't what it was yeah, for sure. Now, um, so I had to I had to try and uh, I was ringing up people. I was going to the libraries and I was obviously looking online, and I found that there was evidence that that this is a real problem. Electromagnetic frequencies are a problem that Sweden had since the early two thousand recognised it as a functional impairment, um, and obviously then we had the two thousand and eleven where the World Health Organization um, registered it as a a carcinogen class two. Um, so I have to say that I, I didn't, I still didn't, I still thought it was me. I honestly did. But as I started to see the research and I started to put the feelers out, I thought there is something going on. But my real aha moment, as I call it, the real light bulb moment was as I was looking for answers with my health, we ended up going to Hippocrates Health Institute in Florida in 2003. And Darren mm -hmm. came with me. Now, when we were over there, we were, we signed up for the uh, three week life change program. I think they called it. Um, at the beginning, you take they have blood draw taken, and you you have dark field blood analysis. And then at the end of the three weeks, you have the blood draw, dark field blood analysis, along with other tests to see how you've improved on their program. Now, at the end of the three weeks, we went in and and had the blood draw. We had the doctors and the let's say functional medicine practitioners there. And we were looking at Darren's blood on the screen and it was absolutely awful. It, had, it was sticky, it was clumping, and it had that Rollo effect where, yeah. you know, the coins that, that are stuck, stuck together. And they said, what have you been doing, Darren? Have you not been following the program? He said, I've been following it right down to the T. I've done absolutely everything. And they said, okay, that we were looking for answers. Please tell us what you were doing just before the blood got taken. 
And he said, well, funnily enough, I was on a mobile phone yeah. uh, for half an hour on a business call to, to the UK. Um, and they said, okay, well, that's it. They they knew about these things back then, but it wasn't really discussed. It was like a, a nod to it. And it was a big aha moment because this was a person that was healthy, young back then, <laughs> um, who had no symptoms. He didn't experience any issues around technology at all. But that's what he was, had done to his blood and his cells. So this was a healthy person that was experiencing it, but didn't have symptoms. So I thought, okay, maybe I'm the canary in the coal mine that can feel it, but it's actually affecting everyone. And of course, now we know we're all electromagnetic beings. So we all get affected at cellular level. Mm -hmm. And if Precise I can explain for the thing. audience, maybe RULO, mm -hmm. you know, that word, but what's your understanding of RULO, right? It's a clumping of, it, a kind of stacking of, of red cells. blood cells. Is mm -hmm. that it? And it looks like coins. It just okay. reminds you of, of like rolls of coins stuck together. So yeah, yeah and it, it Rulo looked, it, is a, a role in in French, in right? French, so okay, in French, so yeah. I, I can yeah. I can link to a few studies, but there's other researchers that have said mm -hmm. this. Dr. Magda Havis, Dr. Beverly mm -hmm. Rubik, to just name these two. They're I I've heard differing opinions from scientists. Does it happen? Mm. Does it not happen? Several scientists in my circles seem to think that RULO can happen very fast if you're exposed to mm. Wi-Fi or cell phones. And there's a few studies also showing an increase in blood pressure in in people. Mm. So that could be okay. linked where the blood viscosity mm. is not the same and, and becomes, you know, uh, negatively affected after mm -hmm. a, just a few minutes of exposure. And then maybe it gets better over time. Maybe the body um, gains it back. And I've been explained uh, or I've been told years ago that it has to do with what's called the zeta potential of red blood cells. Okay. And that's mm -hmm. kind of the charge that red blood cells have to repel mm -hmm. each other. So there's kind of a, a magnet effect where they repel each other that so sense. that they stay uh, yet, you know, in homeostasis in the blood. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't happen, then they cannot deliver the oxygen as well. So that's my understanding of it. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's really weird to be able to see it visually. I have to say that really um yeah that must be wild kind of, well it yeah. was it really really was and it looked just how my understanding was about trans fats um you know if you if you have a certain amount of, of the bad fats what yeah. it does to your blood so so that was that was a real aha moment for me um and i then took it upon myself to think okay if everyone's possibly experiencing this then what can I do to help others? Because there are must be other people that are experiencing it in the same way as me. And hence, up to the present day where we started Conscious Spaces um, to try and get the word out that the environments are shaping us. Um, and particularly, uh, we're known for helping people with electromagnetic frequency um, issues in their home, in their work, um, and EHS sufferers. So yeah. how how did that work? Uh, did you create a company and then eventually, you know, people word to mouth that are electrosensitive reached out to you, or were you um, involved with organizations of activists, for example? Um, I think we we've all been doing our bit, let's say, but no, it was word of mouth. It was it literally spiraled very fast, actually. Yeah. Um, and that made me also think, okay, well, you know, people need to need help here. They really do. They're reaching out faster than we actually even thought. It, it really did. The company grew since 2019 very, very, very quickly. And then we had a global community, you know, people from all around the world wanting to know uh, what they can do what, and what, what can they do. You know, it's such a, um interesting um, subject when you speak to people still. Um, People understand the blue light, I think, now, you know, the issues with screens and technology and blue light. You mm -hmm. can talk to them also about addiction. People get that. But when you go any further than that, I think um, it can it can stumble on people's beliefs because, you know, the technology has become part of their furniture. Really, we, we yeah. rely on it so much. So I think I think it's it's definitely a conversation. And that's where. With conscious spaces, we try and put out articles to try and help inform people, empower people, so that they can go away, do their own research, and um, make decisions for their health, their family, um, at home, um, to try and basically improve their environmental health, and hopefully then lead them into the path of healing. Yeah, and uh, uh, what I liked when I went onto your website is really that mm -hmm. 
you seem to have a way wider scope than just EMFs. Uh, yes. It's, yes. you know, the environment as a whole, and which is mm. part also of building biology. Uh, at least mm. the little I know about building biology is from uh, mm. the Building Biology Institute in the U.S. And yes. you could be trained for just EMS, but also some of them are trained for water quality, air quality, mm -hmm. mold, mm. radon, uh, and EMFs. Uh, and yes. there's probably other things. I know that GeoVital, the GeoVital Academy, yeah, yeah. Um, that um, I, I see the... I, I, you didn't mention it, but I'm totally fine to to mention GeoVital. I know they also mm -hmm. have a component which is about geopathic stressors. Geopathic stress, yeah. Uh, which yeah. is another aspect of the environment. Uh, for those mm -hmm. not familiar mm -hmm. with it, it's you know natural mm -hmm. energies from the earth, but that can still be problematic if you sleep on these energies or if you spend too much time uh, exposed. But yeah, I, I like the holistic approach to the environment. So how did that develop? Is it just because you realize that there's more than just EMFs, right? Because that's so important to tell people that are listening Absolutely. to this, you know, sometimes yeah. they're, they're a bit too myopically focused on EMFs, but other things matter as well. Well, I, I actually believe that EHS is multifaceted and I was really happy to see, I think you interviewed Dr. Nathan, Dr. Yes. Neil Nathan. Yes, okay, it's part so of my uh, 2024 summit. Yeah. So, so my... um cofactors as he would deem them are mold <laughs> unfortunately and epsom epstein bar virus mm -hmm. so um it, i found i've had his book for a handful of years now and i found it just tips really invaluable um particularly for the mold um because you know if you if your cofactors are as i call them kicking off but he would say it in a very scientific way which would probably be mast cell activation mm -hmm. if i can actually if I get a mold exposure, for example, and I can stop the mast cell activation, then immediately it doesn't go into a cascade of symptoms where my EHS gets worse. You know, other symptoms get what gets worse. It, it is multifaceted, and I think you do have to look at the environment. You know, it's all well and good, let's say, as we're going to probably talk about an EMF harmonizer in your room, but if you're still on the phone or you're still drinking tap water, which may have heavy metals in, and the heavy metals may, you know, cause an issue with the EMFs, you know, there's there's some research on that. So I think you have to look at every area to re really, <laughs> excuse me, take a holistic approach. Because as you said, if you start to look just in, in one corner, you're never going, but you know, our bodies are holistic. One, one, pathway you, if, you know if you look at the endocrine system but you don't look at everything else like the immune system you're never really going to heal you have to look at everything as a whole so so that's why we have the pillars in conscious spaces which are very similar to building biology so yes you've got the air the water the light the saunas you know to help um, not only detoxify maybe from the heavy metals but also um build up your easy water in your cells. I'm, I'm sure you've probably had guests on talking about how that they can be of ama amazing benefit. So, so yes, I found through necessity and through trial and error personally that I have to really look at each of those pillars to really have a be able to live in this environment, <laughs> this current environment with yeah. all this technology. And just to go back to, to that aha moment in 2003, you know, that was then. And then I think about the, the amount of radiation, the volume of technology we have, the, um, you know, it's just saturated everywhere. So we really do have to do many things, including EMF hygiene, um, as well as shielding. And I think the harmonizers are just like another tool in the toolkit, really, I'd say. Yeah, and yeah. We'll, we'll get into that. I, I just... You know, something you said, I think, could be so mm. useful for people. You talked about mast mm. cell activation. Can mm. you mm. talk a little bit more about what it means for you to stop this mast cell activation if okay. you feel triggered? And how are you able to avoid the symptoms? Because I feel like this is mm. this could be so important for people that, you know, they have some exposure to wireless and then they know mm. they're going to feel bad. Some people then, have told me yes. it's two weeks. Mm -hmm. And, and mm. I just think about these experiences of, people back in my in my days i used to uh, talk about nutrition and i talked mm -hmm. about you know the prevalence of celiac disease that was undiagnosed and some people told me nick you wouldn't believe if i have a a grain of sand of gluten i'm bedridden for two weeks and yes. and for me it was even hard mm -hmm. to 
imagine. It's not like I don't believe mm -hmm. them, but I'm almost in disbelief. I, I have a mm -hmm. hard time with it because I'm like, well, you know, it's just a little bit. But for some mm -hmm. people with EHS, it's just oh, a little wow, bit of yes. exposure. They feel bad. So how are you able to maybe stop the symptoms in their track? Okay, just before I answer that, I want to just speak back to yeah, sure. other people in the EHS. So we had a, a chap who literally was living in his bathroom. He was so EHS sensitive that they started putting the street lamps up outside. There was towers being going, going up in his area. Yeah. He'd done everything he could do in his home. And the only room that he could sleep in and live in, he ended up being bedridden. Um, and it was clothing, actually. And that's another uh, topic which some people agree with, some people don't. Yeah, but just yeah. for him, just for him, it helped him. And he was able to go out for the first time in two years just by wearing the clothing that we sent him. Now, for others, that won't work at all. Yeah. Um, but it's just that. And there's another person where they 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 swear on the waveguard devices that they're able to regain their lives. Other people, none of this works. They have to have a completely shielded environment. And other people, unfortunately, just as you said, they're so sensitive. We have people ringing up saying, Tara, where can I go? I need to go in a tent, in a field, because I, I can't cope with being around absolutely anything anymore. So we have to find them places now to stay, which is becoming increasingly hard. But this yeah. is the breadth of the variety of EHS sufferers. So so yes, I, I hear you and I really feel for those people as well. It, it's 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 crazy the depths that they have to go to to cope. Um, so mass cell activation. So it's it's basically the bridge between um, the immune system and the nervous system. Mm -hmm. And by literally stopping the mast cell activation when your symptom, when you get every symptom under the book all at once, everything comes at you, it feels like. Um, a tip from Dr. Nathan, which I found really, really helpful, was um, a good quality. It has to be really good quality because I've tested various of, of them. Quercetin. Quercetin helps with the histamine response and the mast cell activation. You take that 30 minutes before a meal and it seems to just calm down any symptoms. And that isn't just the symptoms related to food. It's just how he recommends taking it. You'd have to read the whole chapter in his book to, you know, really, really get a broad understanding. But honestly, I have to say that was been a fantastic tip. Um, the other one from him um, was the vagus nerve activation. And mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I, I, part, I homeschool um, and I run a company, we run two companies, and I had to have something that would help my um, vagus nerve stimulation to help calm down the limbic system and, you know, up the parasympathetic, the rest and digest. So I found humming was really helpful because okay. I found that humming, humming activates the vagus nerve. So that's something that everybody can do. Everybody can do that when they're starting to feel triggered, you know, because you get in that stress state as well. There's a, there's, a, there's a level of anxiety which comes with it, whether that's the electrosmog that people are just dealing with or, or an ongoing reaction in, in the environment um, with uh, EMFs. Um, but I found that those two things, really, really basic, really simple um, I, I do use them all the time still, I have to say. Yeah. Gotcha. And um, Dr. Neil Nathan has, is it his book Toxic, I guess, that you're Toxic. referring to? Yeah. And then yes. he has a new book. By the time this oh, interview okay. uh, is published, it's called The Sensitive Patient's Healing Guide. And what Amazing. he did, uh, he, he told me about it during our interview mm -hmm. for the 2024 EMF Hazard Summit. You can still uh, check out that in the show notes as well. But basically, he told me that... Uh, he, he took the top experts in sensitivities, all sorts yeah. of different walks of life. Some of them are experts in mold, some of them EHS, some mm -hmm. of them uh, might, might be, you know, for other types of sensitivities as well, including light, including multiple chemical sensitivity. Yeah. And basically, mm -hmm. he wanted to create a practical guide for people that are hypersensitive at any level. And what he, he, he really help me understand is that mm. it's not a sensitivity to one thing. It's kind of mm. a, it, for, for most people, this is not the case. It's not just EMS and people mm. who don't explore the fact that maybe they're also triggered by food or they're also triggered by light. They're also triggered by maybe emotional states. Mm. They don't necessarily have all the information they need mm. to be able to manage themselves. And the only way that you can desensitize yourself and go back to health to a normal way of functioning is to 
avoid these triggers as much as you can to kind of calm down yes. your body, right? So for yes. you, what did you find among all the solutions you offer in Conscious Spaces? I know you, mm. you mentioned that there are so many different types of EHS sufferers, but mm. what worked for you? Was it did you That's install funny. a Faraday cage on your bed? Did you use the EMF harmonizers? Did you use diet? Okay. okay. Um, for me, I would say that the EMF hygiene, so we're talking the basics, the absolute basics that everyone can do kind of yesterday. <laughs> Turning the phone in airplane mode, you know, um, going from wireless to wired, that was mm -hmm. a big thing. Because you're on, you know, I'm on the computer a lot. And that was a that was an amazing thing. Obviously, you can do more, like you can ground the computers for electric fields and so on, but just just the basics. Um, and then the shielding. I really had to have the shielding. So the canopies with a power line filter to stop anything coming back on the earth wire onto the canopies. I had to have that space at night for my brain and my body to recover. I felt basically the more resilient I could become um, from having that nighttime space and, and complete rest. So I would obviously not have the any any blue light either. So imagine that the whole of the the bedroom space is a sanctuary. It's a complete sanctuary. It's it's like going back to you know a couple of hundred years ago. Yeah. That's a, so, but that's what I need to to be able to then cope um, in the daytime. I found that that was the absolute key. Um, as far as anything else, I did find supplements super helpful. I have to say, as well as dealing as we just talked about with the cofactors. So mold, and for me, obviously, uh, for the ME, the Epstein bar, bar virus. Um, those those things were really were ideal. And magnesium, you know, we we've got an article on our website um, called Thirteen. It goes through thirteen different supplements that you might okay. want to look at. Yeah, which might might be interesting to people. But glutathione, magnesium, are more NAC a precursor to magnesium. I found those super helpful. But shielding, shielding distance exposure the, the 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 kind of the 101s but the cofactors have to be dealt with as well you're absolutely right as well as clean water because as you say it's multi it is multifaceted so if you're doing all these things but you're still drinking awful tap water or you're living in a moldy house um it's not it's not going to help it's not going to yeah. help and you're not going to be able to recover fully you're not going to be able to get your life back um the light actually was quite um, a key thing for me as well. Um, getting rid of the blue, getting out in the morning in the sunshine or what little sunshine we have in, in the UK. But <laughs> yeah. first, yeah, I know. first thing in the morning um, and then at dusk, dusk and dawn or just, just around those times when you can look, you know, kind of at the sun and get, a, get that kind of beautiful exposure. I found that was really helpful just to, um, kind of reset my system. So as I was having that um, calm from the shielding or the, let's say the sanctuary room, then getting out into nature was was super helpful. And, and also um, shoes and socks off, grounding, not, not using grounding mats, anything like that. No, just real grounding, um, beach, sea, <laughs> rocks, anything I could get my feet on. And I found that really, really helpful. Um, and then the tips earlier about the quercetin um, and the vagus nerve activation, super useful. I'm trying to think of anything else, cofactors. Um, well, what about harmonizers? Oh, harmonizers. But, yeah, well, oh, you the can, harmonizers. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, heavy metals, That I, I think a lot for a lot of people, detoxification or and it's yeah. kind of a, I find it's a complicated route sometimes because you sometimes you do have to yes. get tested and I, uh, I do heavy think metals. Do. You know, mm. I I took I took some stuff for heavy metals and I had a panic attack and yeah. I you know I didn't follow my my own advice, which is be gentle with it and be respectful. Mm. That if you do release these metals from your bones or from your tissues too fast, you might get in trouble. Mm -hmm. And I did get in trouble. So that's oh, just, so, you know, something I, I always mention to my readers, don't do like me, mm. <laughs> do like no, be, no. be, sm <laughs> be smarter, smarter than myself. Really, I, I screwed yeah. up that, that, that day and it could have been more dangerous, even, you know, having mm -hmm. a panic attack yeah. while driving or something. And it was really yeah. out of nowhere. I had very good, you know, mental health. It's just mm -hmm. the, the, the release of whatever was happening in my body just made me overwhelmed, unable to mm -hmm. move for, 
30 minutes in in the entrance wow. of my building i mean it's wow. kind of staring at a wall and feeling anxious and i was like mm-hmm. okay i don't know what's happening and then i i realized oh yeah i'm on this detox right mm-hmm. ah geez okay i think i made a mistake on the dosage but uh m- maybe you can get you know for a few minutes on heavy metals detoxification how it yeah. helped you and then let's dive into the this entire sure, conversation that. around harmonizers <laughs> that Harmonizing. you know it's always the thing it, it's something that people are so fascinated by and yeah. they want answers so I'm, I'm very happy to get into it afterwards well i think it's that magic bullet isn't it it's the yeah. magic bullet fix yeah. i think unfortunately but but you know technology is going that way so we'll see but um heavy metals i'll be honest i completely agree with you i do not recommend anybody doing anything around heavy metals unless they're working with a functional medicine practitioner. Yeah. And normally if you can get tested for other things, you know, you have a quick conversation with someone and you say, have you checked out the mold? Because the symptoms you're telling me is, you know, I think you ought to go and work with someone. Um, so we can help point people in the right direction for okay. functional medicine practitioners, as well as mold specialists and mold re- remediation companies as well. So, um, but no, I, I I wouldn't recommend doing it. Um, and I have done similar with other things as you did, Nick. So I do. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So hat, hats off. I get it. And it's good <laughs> that you can share that too, because it, it makes it real. You know, we all make mistakes with within this journey. We all make mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we're trialing and testing so that so that hopefully the people listening don't have to. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Guinea pigs. <laughs> Guinea pigs. Absolutely. Hey, let me interrupt this podcast for just a second. I have to tell you about my most downloaded report of all time, which is called 5G in 5 Minutes. It's a free report and is a quick and rational guide to 5G radiation. The title kind of says it all. This report will tell you everything you need to know about the fifth generation of wireless networks that are being installed everywhere these days and the radiation they emit, what the risks might be, and how this might, in the end, affect your health and the health of your family members in just a few minutes. And it's an easy read, it's heavily referenced with up-to-date independent science, free of theories and speculations. So that's something that you can feel good about sharing with your friends, family members, and people you want to inform about this very important environmental toxicity issue. Just go to theemfguy.com slash 5G. So that's the letter uh, G and the number five. So theemfguy.com slash 5G to download it. And I hope you enjoy the info and that you can spread the word out. Now back to the podcast. Um, Harmonizers. Okay. Um, Gosh. Well, it all started with the sticker, didn't it? Really? That was what was years ago. The stickers, the pendants, um, claiming to neutralize, harmonize, um, there was a resonance thing when it was it was in bioresonance with there was there was all sorts of things coming out. Um, I did try some and I got sent a lot actually once we started conscious faces. I did get sent various um, options to try, um, and also I get contacted um, with people wanting to tell their story about how other harmonizers have helped them. Yeah. So I, I think it's always worth keeping an open mind. I think it's really difficult as well. Because with these harmonizers to date, there hasn't been any, you know, we can't take out our meters and go, absolutely, I can prove that this is, you know, this is actually working for you. I can totally prove it. Or here's the independent studies that can show that this is absolutely working for you so I can get behind it. Um, so I think you have to be careful. But at the same time, it's always about listening because everyone has their story and it's their experience. So if they are experiencing benefit from certain harmonizers, you know, we, we need to be asking more questions like why we need to be getting more testing. We, we need to be getting testing where maybe we can test all of the different products with the same tests. And maybe one will come up more for this is helping with sleep, which is, I think, where WaveGuard is really valuable um, for some. Um, whereas other ones might be, um, I don't know, working in a slightly different way and, and be helping people maybe um, with that calming aspect. I, that, you know, I, I just think it's we've got to keep our minds open and not get into the dogma that we're finding ourselves where we completely, I think, have to date. It's, it's opening doors now. That it's, it's becoming more understandable to people, even building biologists, they're starting to, you know, open their minds to the possibility of harmonizers working. And I think that's because maybe 
technology's changed, the science has maybe improved, um, not for everything, but I, I do think uh, there is going to be more harmonizers on the market as time goes on. And I think that we'll probably see more depolarization products like WaveGuard, because I think that's something that even um, kind of the skeptics can understand because you can actually show a scientific uh, way that it can actually uh, depolarize the waves. And therefore we understand that depolarized waves are what, are what we find in nature rather than the linear polarized waves that we have from the man-made technology. So I, I think there's it's starting to become more evident that there is technology rising that might be might actually work and that I think that people in the EMF industry may be able to get behind in time. I think I think we're I think we're getting close, but I still still nothing, nothing is as good as EMF hygiene and shielding to date. I'm I'm be I'm sure in my lifetime I'll probably find this harmonizing device that someone will come up with, which will be absolutely amazing. Um, but until then it's it is another for me it's another tool in the toolbox i do sell we sell at conscious spaces waveguard and that for me was when i tested it personally i felt the benefit and yeah. i had tested lots of them but also they've got the 25 studies behind them and i really like looking at what they've done to date study wise especially the one on sleep where they found that increased the theta wave um, optimal theta wave production. And obviously we know the theta waves can, can help in uh, cognitive recall, um, meditation, um, memory enhancement and things like that. So so there's, there's something that you can get behind, but still more research needs to be done. Um, but I, I definitely think it's it should be an open kind of discussion still. Um, and I'm finding that it's opening doors more rather than just before where I can't measure it so it, it can't be real. Um, but yeah. we're, you know, I'm sure, I think you said, is it Dr. Beverly Rubik or there's another lady, isn't there, who who measures the biofield. Dr. Rubik, she coined Dr. the term, Rubik, okay. uh, the human biofield. She was okay, the one great. who came up with the term, the scientific term officially. And she told me, you know, she's, she's very skeptical of many of these mm -hmm. devices. However, the reality is some of them test quite positive on some measurements for example yeah. uh, uh some of them some of them is uh dark field uh so uh, dark field uh, dark live blood, blood analysis mm. some of it is also subtle energy testing such as the jdv mm -hmm. cameras that uh, okay. will um, measure uh, biophotonic emissions from your fingers mm -hmm. it's a machine mm -hmm. you put it on it's uh, it's based on uh Kirlian photography yes. uh, by mm -hmm. um, dr uh, dimitri karotkov and mm -hmm. the jdv camera is able to measure the light emissions from fingers and correlate mm -hmm. that to a state of health and there's mm -hmm. this is good science uh with decades mm -hmm. of development in um i think in the eastern bloc or russia yeah yes i i think it's a good measurement doesn't tell mm -hmm. you the whole story but it does tell you these things are doing something, something. and yeah you know when i talked to to darren in in at the health optimization i i knew i could have this conversation with you uh or darren and anyone from your organization because I don't feel that you're dogmatic about EMF harmonizers. And that's really I, I, mm -hmm. the problem I have with certain people and how they recommend them is really, you know, you installed this in your bedroom and now you're protected. They make it too simplistic. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to be protected, right? Well, does it mean that now you can be on your phone, be reckless, live right next to new installs of 5G and, and just mm -hmm. be fine? Well, I wouldn't count on that. I, uh, it's too, like, like I said recently, it's that if someone still develops a brain tumor from their phone, even though they installed the chip or the sticker I told them to install, am I liable? <laughs> and, and yes, yes. Say, and that's, and that's business mm -hmm. speak, but what mm -hmm. about, you know, morally speaking, am yeah, I liable also? Is there mm -hmm. a karma mm -hmm. for Nick Pinot who mm -hmm. recommend recommended to a million people that they could 
get this chip and then on top of that mm -hmm. i was an affiliate so I, I even got paid for that recommendation mm -hmm. so there's even a layer of you know bad karma there if in the end mm -hmm. Oops, it didn't quite work. So maybe it helped mm -hmm. some, but still some people develop brain tumors. Mm -hmm. But I told them they wouldn't. So it's a big responsibility. You know, we we, mm -hmm. we know that some people to this day are killed by their phone. It's not a large yes. percentage by any means, but it's enough for to have an increase in glioblastomas in the UK and mm -hmm. certain mm -hmm. countries. And I think that researchers are, it's still, of course, the science is being debated, but just that, it's huge. And then when it comes to EHS, mm -hmm. though, and let's bring it back to EHS. Mm -hmm. The thing, the problem I have with building biologists and some mm -hmm. of my immediate colleagues is some of them have told me, you know, all these harmonizers are snake oil salesman kind of stuff there are scams i don't agree with that yes, either no, because what no. of like you mentioned so many people write to me and told tell me nick you know i follow your advice i turn off my phone i never use wireless at home i'm, I'm all wired mm. up but then i use the waveguard or i use you know blue shield or mm -hmm. aries tech so many of these different brands I, I some of them i hear more than others and they tell me it it changed my life so i'm like yes. okay well this completely, you know, disregarding that person experience would be kind of irresponsible. Let's see where it leads me. And then I have a second Back. person and a third telling me about these things. So I agree with you that, you know, we cannot completely discount them, but they're part of the toolbox. Uh, mm -hmm. What have you found to to be a useful usage of the waveguard is it that you put it in your bedroom or you you take it with you like the portable one how do you personally use it at home okay um i still like the shielded environment in the bedroom mm -hmm. I, I i like that i i like to have that as a sanctuary space so a cost effective thing for some depending on how much because because people he said it's it's a big spend for some people as well we should mention that as well it's one thing buying a a sticker and there may be a placebo effect as well within that sticker you know that they feel like they're doing something for their health and maybe that's all they can afford so just to just to go back that's why we put articles up to try and help and ebooks to try and help people Here's the information. Here's what you can do. Try and empower yourself to do what you can within this. Yeah. And this is where EMF hygiene comes in. Um, as far as the wave got at home, sanctuary space is the bedroom. And then the rest of the house, that's where I use the waveguard, maybe a, ha a home, a home device. And then um, I'll use a key shield for travel and on my desk. But to be fair, I have I have very low um, EMFs around me when I'm working. Okay. So yeah. so it, it I find that it really comes into its own, um, particularly now they've got the 2.0 version out because I spoke to Hagen Fears and I said to him, and he did listen, and you don't always get this as well. I said that I'm not finding that it did for me what it did, you know, five years ago, four okay. years ago, Hagen. And I think it's the increase in frequencies. Can you look at this? So he went about creating a certain specialist chamber where he could, um, let's say, activate the devices and make sure that they were stronger than they were before. Um, and I have found that to be the case. Um, now, for some EHS sufferers, they are too strong. So we have to play around. They're not like the original ones. Um, but typically, if you could shield your bedroom still, get all the tech out the bedroom, do what you can, and then in the rest of the house, key home, travel key shield or on your desk key shield. And I match that up with wearing the clothing on flights or in really, really high density areas. I, I have to, I literally have to, otherwise um, I, I, I can't go to these places. So I kind of mix and mix and match, but that's how typically currently I'm using the waveguard. Um, some people, when they had the small devices, the key me's, um, there was one lady who absolutely swore that it calmed her heart rate down because she had such a high heart rate from being mm -hmm. around any so we're talking electric fields as well as radio frequency mobile phones okay. and she she made a little um kind of hanging device necklace and she would slot the the key me and walk around with it and she she absolutely swore by that so again you have to listen listen to these people i mean i can tell you that i felt the difference but again it's a tool as you said in the in the toolkit and um and I do think 
some of the other devices that you mentioned, I've heard similar from people writing in and telling me. Um, there's and there's a few others as well, um, yeah. and that's con and it's consistent. And they and they often ask me what the difference is with the waveguard, and I have to just say. I have to support their decisions, but also refer them back to the science as well. What studies have been done? Can you send me the studies? Are they internal or the external? Who, who, you know, that kind of thing. And that opens up a conversation too, because people are open. They want to, they want to feel good about what they've done, what they've purchased as well. Um, yeah, so de definitely. I do have a podcast with Hagen Fears mm. that I have to mention, number okay. eighty-seven. We talked mm. about the problem with EMF protection claims, what studies to mm. look for and things like that. Mm. I find that at least he is one of the very few creators mm -hmm. of these devices that is is doing decent science and is yeah. trying to invest. It costs a lot of money. So yeah. if I was mm -hmm. an entrepreneur building a company that does EMF harmonization stuff, anything, I would be... <laughs> You know, you have to reach a level of revenue where you're able mm -hmm. to, you know, put a few hundred thousands, a few millions over time to mm -hmm. do these studies. They're That's extremely true. costly. And if they mm -hmm. come out of pocket, I'm an entrepreneur myself. I would find it very, a very difficult position to be in. You believe in your product. You're trying to prove it. You're trying to do the studies. But then mm -hmm. where do you find hundreds and the hundreds of, of thousands yeah. of dollars. It's tough. So to oh. give him credit, he's doing, I think, better science than most other companies. And also, I found that he was open minded and well versed into the science as well. So that's, mm -hmm. you know, he's on my short list of companies that I personally mm -hmm. trust. And also, he mm -hmm. was not dogmatic about what his devices can do. I find that sometimes people who sell WaveGuard or the QI stuff are mm -hmm. a little bit misunderstanding of what it does and what it does not so yes. sometimes i find that it's not even the company that has this messaging but it's their mm -hmm. affiliates yes that's, so that's, it's not that's to excuse tricky. the company look i'm a company i have affiliates for for my summit i have you know a hundred different people that will tell you about the 2024 emf hazard summit Am I controlling, am I able to control everything that they will say about what my summit can and cannot do? Will some of them say, you know, Nick Pino has discovered a magic bullet for electrosensitivity. If you click here, you're going to be cured. Someone could say <laughs> yes. that and I would be they like could. horrified, mm -hmm. right? I, I would be horrified mm -hmm. about it. I would be, I would say, no, look, you're going to be banned from my affiliate program, but it means I would have to monitor a hundred people and what they do yeah. in their business, all social media posts. And if you're at the level of um, Hagen and his affiliate program, I think he has, you know, in the thousands of affiliates, it's a tough problem to have. Mm -hmm. um, you're it, trying to expand, sell your product, but at the same time, the messaging can get lost sometimes. So I find it's not to excuse him, but I, I understood the problem in a you know more holistic manner when I talked to mm -hmm. him in London. And okay. again, we had a good podcast conversation. So I'm, I'm glad to hear that you also have this same, you know, exploratory um, mm -hmm. type of approach to the harmonizers. And I think really that's that's how we should position them. Mm -hmm. um, really, I think I, think I, I completely 100 percent agree. I, I do think we are going to see um we're already seeing products like the Medita phone. Um, so not just the harmonizing products, but we yep. are seeing different tech coming in as well. Um, and I think just like with the Medita phone, they, were, they weren't getting it right. They kept working on their product. You know, they were putting the money back in, putting the money where their mouth is to try and get the product on the market in a workable form. So I think there are people out there in these industries that are trying. They're trying. And going back to what you said about... Um, going behind a product or mentioning a product and then feeling um, if if it doesn't work or you hear something later where the product didn't do what it said in the tin, let's say, that yeah. you feel that you feel that karma responsibility. I I have that. I have that. And and um with the volume of people that are, I'm sure you do get contacted by, you have to be quite considered with your approach, but also try and empower them continuously to make their own decisions rather yes. than having that responsibility because you can only do what you can do and that, you know, you can put the word out, you can put your energy into giving the right information, but then it's up to the person to really mm -hmm. get behind it and work out what's best for them. Cause that in itself is, is part of the journey, isn't it? 
part of understanding yeah. and part of the healing. So, but I hear you. We we have we have the same issue. And again, same as what you mentioned with Hagen, we are trying to give a balanced view with options. Yeah. But and- I do think yeah. yeah, sorry, you're 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 totally right. You know, a lot of people when they first start, maybe they 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 bow down to this idol called you know doctors, allopathic medicine. Mm. But mm. then some of them make the mistake of you know, oh no, allopathic medicine. These guys don't know anything. I'm gonna bow down to holistic medicine now, <laughs> and they're my I know, gods, I know. right? I know. So I know. It's the same it's problem. A, that's a really good point. Yeah, yeah, really good point. It, that's that's really interesting actually. Because I was thinking um, of us having this conversation, I was thinking about all the research and what we were going to be talking about. And it made me remember that there was, um, I can't remember the name escapes me, but the the chap that was running the British Medical Journal, he he basically, he's retired now, but he turned around and said, 10% of what you'll find in the journals nowadays is accurate science, 10%. So it's interesting that we, we are... Um, worried in a way about what we're putting out but then you look at conventional (laughs) sites and what they're putting out and the fact that it is funded so heavily funded um and captured taken whatever you want to call it so it's really interesting and but i think again as we're concerned about what we're putting out there's going to be there is good scientists there's wonderful scientists in the, in the let's say the mainstream who are also trying to do the right thing and it's just about trying to find the kind of middle ground with these people to actually start opening more conversations around this and i think the more that we can collaborate with mainstream people who are open minded i think as time goes on we're going to see an amazing array of innovation i really do um, I think it's fascinating time to be alive, quite frankly. Um, there's a lot going on in the world which doesn't seem positive, but there's there's always the rise of kind of innovation at these times and people looking because they have to look for other solutions. Um, and I think that we'll, again, see more depolarization things to mimic natural, uh, natural frequencies. And I also think that we're going to see probably technology where, say it's similar technology, but using frequencies that align with biology rather than go against it health health giving frequencies that can do the same communication things for us mm-hmm. you know there's no reason that we actually have to be using certain frequencies that 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 you know that they've sold off that the telecoms companies are using we could be using other frequencies right now that could be doing the same stuff but it would be health giving it would be stuff that's found in in earth in in nature in the earth's atmosphere and I think that people are going to, I think we're going to see more of that. We're going to see more depolarization, more uh, mimicking natural frequencies, more using those natural frequencies for health. Um, I definitely think that's going to going to be happening. And, you know, just like with a Medita phone, we're going to be looking at better phones, less radiation. Um and also, there's that Daylight Computer Company. Have you seen those guys? Yeah, they're I'm, quite, uh, I'm connecting with the oh, owner brilliant. tomorrow, I think. I have a, and, a call Anjan? with him. Engine. Yeah, and, Engine Chatta. Yeah. yeah. Lovely uh, chat. Lovely chat. Yeah. So uh, have um, you have you looked at the computer? I mean, is it um, maybe my community will have heard about the computer by mm-hmm. Dan, but I think it's exciting. You know, just yeah. he showed me the display. It it can mm. be used in the bright sun. It's a tablet mm. for now, and they will yeah. have you know yes. laptops and maybe phones. Who knows? Mm. But this guy literally told me on Zoom. I felt like you know I'm in a spy movie or something because this guy said you know I want to be the next Steve Jobs of health. So we nice. want to be Apple mm. of health. And I said, mm. my God, that's a huge undertaking. But the guy has been trained, you know, top universities, MIT, Silicon Valley, and then discovered he has this strong conscience to him. And mm. I really mm. connected with the guy because that's the same thing for me. He, he saw what's happening in Silicon Valley, mm. angel investors, and then mm. eventually, you know, large boards of of people that have a vested interest in a company and then you know the original messaging or the original intent of a company can crumble under the pressure of you know sheer Mm. capital uh, or capitalism there and Mm. and he kind of realized my god i need to i need to not take investors and kind of do do this all myself Mm. but it took him Mm you know, over a decade to develop the technology to have Mm. a screen that is 
paper-like, but mm-hmm. that does yes. not reflect the, the the sun that can be used outside. And that's why, outside. you know, daylight computer. I find it fascinating. I'm, I, mm-hmm. It got me excited. And, you know, what me you're too. telling me, me too. What, what you're mm-hmm. telling me right there mm-hmm. also gets me excited. It's true that, mm-hmm. you know, yes, there are horrible technologies on the market i mean i'm mm. sometimes i spend time as if you know i need to stress myself more i spend time on the youtube <laughs> channel of the 6g uh what yes. is it the 6g yes. council or something i can link to it if you guys really mm. want to torture your mind mm. with this stuff but you know it's engineers that are looking at 6g and what they're gonna roll out next and mm. i stay on top of it for my readers i feel mm. you know the moral obligation to be on top of things. And sometimes it's too much. I, I gotta, yeah, you know, you turn switch it off, off. Yeah. switch off. <laughs> but, you know, this is horrible. Also, at the same time, there are great minds yes. throughout the world yeah. that are that are realizing this stuff oh. is horrible, but there are geniuses such as uh, mm-hmm. Engine, Engine, Engine and also other inventors that mm. are willing to you know put that same energy and instead of mm. investing it in in poisonous technologies uh, they're gonna mm. you know be the future steve jobs yes. and yes if some of them you know have a strong conscience and are able to mm. keep the control of their companies we mm. can see rapid change in this world yes. with better tech so it's a message okay. of hope i like it uh um, yeah and Please mention, you know, your websites, how people can learn. Sure, I know you have sure. a lot of education on conscious spaces. Anything you yes. wanted to mention, readers? Um, just come and say hi. Come and ask questions. Come and say hi. We're here to help. We're trying to help, as we've just discussed. Um, um, you can download our free ebook. There's loads of articles which um, are all on the different pillars we just talked about. Um, funny enough, we probably will do one on EMF harmonizers and frequencies. We're going to do one on frequencies soon. Perfect. So watch this space for that. Um, but just just message us. Come to the website. Contact us. Say hi. Sign up. Um, we hopefully put good content out. Um, and we'll be we'll be on it again as far as content over the next year. So yeah, just just love you to come and join the community. Perfect. And is it something that is UK based or is it international? You know, um, you can ship in, anywhere. 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 Anywhere at all. Okay. Yeah, anywhere at all. Um, and we we do surveys in the UK, um, um, but we can hook you up as as I know you guys have got certain places in, in the States covered, but we try and basically um, collaborate with people in different countries, whether it's for architecture, um, homes from the ground up to make sure they're all shielded, looking at the geopathic stress as well. So we kind of kind of got our feet in lots of, different on lots of different soil let's say globally um we're just yeah lots of people are getting in touch as well just like Anjan you know you you find people that they find you so I think I think we're finding each other and hopefully if we all keep talking and supporting each other I think that within the next 10 years I think we're going to see wonderful wonderful homes innovation that's something we didn't talk about actually the actual building of spaces which which I'd probably maybe get um, get you onto my podcast. I'm going to be starting and talking about that because I'd be really interested to see how how you think that's going to shape things in the next few years. That that would be um, nice, and you know, especially yeah. if if we can get my colleague Brian Hoyer to join us. Nice. I think he would yes. be. You know, he he's a geek on these things. I follow the science, but he really follows. You know, the 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 new building materials, nice. the new constructions with his team at Shielded mm. Healing. So mm. you guys would have a great time. I, I, and we did we did uh, interviews in the past where both of us were worked together. It's always a good fun, and we it's still fun. have to great. this day, you know, a membership where we oh, yes. uh, we do yes. Q and As mm. and all of this with the mm. EMF circle. Mm. So, uh, well, Tara, it's been so nice talking to you yeah, i would love to um, have another chat in the future that's for sure i for think sure. we align very well i feel we're kindred spirit in the, in this space mm-hmm. where we mm-hmm. really really agree on so far uh, everything <laughs> really <laughs> I, there, there's not one point of disagreement that i saw you're very balanced in your view and uh, i'm i'm very uh, grateful for your time and great, i hope that many you. people check out conscious spaces uh, you you have also, all sorts of great products from EMF mitigation to air quality, water quality, the surveys you mentioned. So you have a very wide understanding and also mm-hmm. a lot of knowledge that you're sharing through articles and whatnot. So please check out Conscious Spaces. And um, I hope that uh, many people will uh, discover uh, your your mission with the, this uh, this interview today. Thank you, Nick. And you. 
<laughs> for and sure. I hope to see you Th soon. Yes, for Take sure. Care. For sure. See you, see you soon. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. In case this wasn't already obvious, the information provided in this podcast is not intended to replace medical advice. We always recommend that you review this information with a functional medicine practitioner or environmental medicine doctor who is up to date with the latest information on the dangers of EMFs and the best practices around electrohypersensitivity, just to name these two things. And if you want to support my work, please consider sharing this episode with people you care about. You can also also invest in my book, courses, or recommended products found at theemfguy.com. Thank you.